Welcome to Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. With over 20 years of real estate experience and selling over 150 homes a year, Laura Sanders is the number one REMAX agent in the state of Florida for 2021. Join us each week as we discuss how to make money through buying and flipping homes to renting versus selling and everything in between. To, to join the conversation, call in live 888-994-994. 4995 Studio A. Hi, and welcome to Making Money with Laura Sanders, and I am your host, Laura Sanders. Every week we talk about something that helps you make a little money, save a little money, and this week we're going to talk about divorce and <laughs> why it's probably cheaper to keep them. <laughs> divorce twice. You're divorced twice, Freddie? What's wrong with you? I've been divorced, and it costs a fortune. Yeah, I bet it does. Oh, yes. Yes, so. Some people have tried it a couple of times. I've tried it a couple of times. Did you lose money? Of course I lost money. Uh, <laughs> it's so unfair. So, so we do have a divorce attorney that is supposed to be calling in to talk to us about some of the new laws that have just come into effect. I don't know if it's in your favor or not in your favor. So if you want to try it for a third time or four, I don't know, it's your fourth or fifth time. No, it's okay. But thank you for counting backwards. Yeah. It, it, uh, the laws in Florida used to be very difficult on divorce, no? With, um, I got, I got really lucky the first time, to be honest with you. Really? Well, first of all, I had no children involved. You had children your first time, I right? had two children, yes. And your second time? The first time, I didn't have no children. The second time, it's the two children. That was the big bang. <laughs> that was yeah. the big one. Well, there was definitely some banging involved. Oh, absolutely. It was <laughs> not, it wasn't a good scenario. But property-wise, how do you make money through divorce? Well, the woman, uh, well, it's not always a woman. I think today we're a little more... Uh, you know, multi I, multi loss. I, I think I think now it's like even keel, right? Like could be the woman making money, the man making money. I think sometimes the children, you know, could go to the husband, they can go to the wife. I mean, I don't think there's any one person it used to be back in like beaver cleaver times, right? It would be <laughs> you know, that the the husband would pay child support. Yeah, but that's so changed cuz more women are working now, so Right. Well, it, it also could be takes the other two, way around household incomes to really to um, support a family, doesn't it? It does. Divorce-wise with commercial property, same aspect as with regular properties, equal division? Why wouldn't it be? I, I don't guess know. unless you I, I had it never... beforehand, right? Well, that's well, the question I had. If you had it beforehand and you can prove it. Well, I'm not an attorney, nor do I play one on television, so I guess that would I be the attorney question, the attorney, but yes. I guess he's late like usual. Like usual? Yeah, he's always late. Is he? Yeah. But that's a good question. Um, getting married when you're established, getting married when you're not established. Is it a young marriage is oh, one thing? I think totally. Like if you, if you are not established when you get married, I think that's best case scenario for the person, that's, the person that marries you, like for each person. Because then I think it's going to be an equal split asset, right? But when you're established, it's a different animal. I think it's bad for that person that comes into the marriage that takes care of the children, if there's children involved. If there's children involved. What if you have two and she has two or three or whatever it is? That's another division that's kind of interesting. Well, I think it's whoever is depending upon the other person, right? And then there's always a change. She goes to work for him. Right. They each have children. Uh, it doesn't work out. Then what happens? She helped build his empire, let's say. Right. But then you can show that you're part owner, I guess. But if your name's not on it, right? That's the other thing. Does your name have to we be on We just have to be very careful about using he, she, because... Well, you know what I mean. It's not he, she. It's like... No, them. I know. Because but, but, but years ago, it was it used a to he, be. she kind know, of thing, right? People are going to write to me. It isn't he, she. <laughs> it's more or less... We're talking about in general terms. It could be her. It could be him. We're not, right. we're not picking sides. Um, but then there's the other difficult thing about, suppose it was the other person that helped build the empire and she, she or she can show that it was their influence that made this business that the other person started. How does that work out? But how do you show that? You can show assets. You can show how much it was worth when she got in there or he got in there. You can show the things that that person brought to the table. You can show lots of different Well, that's why nuggets. I always tell people... I'm, you know, listen, some people don't like that, but I always say, listen, everything's all unicorns and rainbows at the beginning, right? right. But that can always end. 
And I know that sounds callous, and I know that if my husband's listening tonight, that he'll be like, really? Really, is that what you think? And, and listen, I love my husband to death, and I, and I hope that we're together forever, but you know, listen, things happen sometimes. And I hope, and I hope that nothing ever happens, you know, but sometimes things happen. So you always have to prepare and be prepared. You need a plan B just in case. Right. It, it I had a prenup. Only, I had a prenup in both of my marriages. But it's not only marriage. Sometimes people die. So you need that's a plan a B as well. That's a whole other thing that, you know, that's a whole other. But you still need a plan B is what I'm saying. So it's not that you're kicking anybody under the bus. Right. You're being a realist. And nowadays, marriage is a business, just like everything else you do. You, you, you invest, you grow together. Hopefully you get old together um, and you try to make things work for you and the other person or the other persons because there could be children involved, grandparents involved. Uh, you can have in-laws living with you because they're having a hard time. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. Yeah. It looks like I'm getting divorced from the divorce attorney. Ooh. What was the name of the attorney that was going to be on, by the way? His name was Scott Levine. Oh, Scott Levine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Mr. Levine must be in court. That's okay. It happens. It happens. They, there's night court. Yeah, he's dead too. <laughs> what was his name? Harry? Ba Harry? Belafonte? No. No. What was his name in Night Court? What was I that remember. lawyer's name? I, Harry? I can't remember his name. But that was a fun show. That was a fun show. They remade it, you know. It's a remake. Yes, I didn't see the remake, though. I just happened to see it one day, and I was like, what is that? And then I was like, oh, look. But a lot of those people are dead. I wanted, and it's true. I wanted to ask him if the courts still favor um, the, the, the mother figure in the system of divorce. Because when I got divorced, I got divorced in Florida. I got married and ended up with divorce in Florida. And even the judge told me at the time, listen, because I wanted my kids, and they said, this is a female state, the mom is gonna get the kids, but thank you for trying. She was very nice to me, but it was a true fact. And I wanted to ask him if, if separation of real estate is treated the same from back then to now, what are some of the laws that have changed to protect everybody, to make it even for everybody? So my divorce was not a horror story. In Florida? Yeah. Okay. My divorce was pretty straightforward because he did not contest it. Were either one of your divorces? Um, Non-contested. Non-contested. It was no. like... It was less hostilities. Okay. Hostilities, but less. <laughs> if that's a thing. So you don't have any horror stories. Anybody else in the room that's been divorced here? John, you ain't been divorced, right? John, yes. you yes, have? I, I have actually, um, I wouldn't say horror stories, but. Um, so you've been divorced? I've been divorced. It was very challenging. I got married at 23, um, had my son, uh, and uh, our marriage only ultimately lasted four years. And, uh, but the last two years were just, it was turmoil. Okay, who got the baby? Uh, actually, we had shared custody. Okay. And um, both of us stayed local. And I noticed that once, you know, we both kind of found happiness afterwards, you know, it took, you know, some time. But uh, things changed and our relationship finally grew into a friendship. I would think once you find happiness, it would make it easier. Yeah, that's why allegedly you got married to begin with, to find happiness. No, but I'm saying once you're divorced and you find other happiness, it makes the, the like working together with the baby or the child makes it easier, I would imagine. That's why I think my husband's ex-wife, it's still like a nightmare. Did you have children <laughs> in, your, in your divorce? <laughs> no, thank God. But I mean, I mean, w I always wish him a un happy un anniversary for our anniversary every year. I, I try to be funny about it. I mean, in a nice way. Like, I, listen, I think he's a great guy. He's just not the guy for me. Correct. I, I, don't, I don't think that there's anything wrong with him for someone else. I think that for, for me, I think that I was young and I'm very loyal to people and I, I loved him, but we were different. Like, I don't really drink, you know? And so, just different paths, different lives, you know? How long were you married? 
we were together for seven years. So, um, and now I'll be married almost 20 years. So at least I got through the seven well, year that's itch. Good. Yeah, well, twice. Well, I broke up with my first boyfriend on my birthday. Oh, you broke up with my breaker. second boyfriend on my birthday. My third boyfriend was my first husband. I broke up with him on my birthday. Did you get married the third time to your husband on your birthday? No, I'm still married to my second husband, and we just don't hang out on my birthday. Oh, good idea. I got you both beat. I was married 17 years. Wow. And I got divorced. And I got divorced uh, in my 40s. So it was a whole change of everything. Wait, and that's the wife you didn't have a kid with? No, that's the one I did have two children with. Oh, but you got married the, the first time. The first one, Susan, I was married for four years. I was 21 as well. And then a couple of years later, I got married again. And 17 years later, I had two boys. Um, and it was Gio who helped me build AMP. This was his idea, my second son, to help me put this together. But, you know, I don't have any animosity towards Michelle. She doesn't like me, but that's okay. You know, if she ever called on me and needed me, I would be there. I don't, I don't hold any... Like you said, it's, you, you, there's somebody for somebody. Sometimes there's somebody that just, I'm not that somebody, which is okay. It just took a long time to realize that. That's a great way to look at it. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, people do change, and they mature at different ages. Um, I think what was important to my ex at that time in her early 20s is no longer important to her. Uh, she now has an amazing work ethic, and um, like I said, we are good friends now, and we always come together on our common son, you know, who um, is just graduating from FAU, so proud of him, and uh, we have always supported him, you know, in these last several years with his education. And you're remarried again now? Yes. Any children with the second marriage? Uh, yes, one. Did you get so a prenup before boys. you got married the second time? No, I did not. Interesting. I think that's interesting. I would think that if you've been married before, did you get a prenup your second time? No, I don't do prenups. I, I, I don't. I get into, if I ever got married I find again. I that very interesting that men that have been married before I haven't gotten prenups. I won't do it because yeah. I... I oh, wait, let's think about that. Let's go to commercial break, and okay. then when we come back, let's talk about prenups and why you guys didn't get prenups because, like, I find that interesting. You've been married before, and you didn't do that. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back after this. We'll go to commercial break and check it out. Whether you're buying, selling, refinancing, or building your dream home, you have a lot riding on your loan specialist. Max Fish, a top 1% mortgage loan officer in the nation, will give you a same-day qualifying quote. Max Fish is committed to providing his customers with mortgage services that exceed their expectations, ensuring that you make the right choice for you and your family is his ultimate goal. Contact Max Fish today at 954-729-6933 or max.fish at nwmcorp.net. At JK Closing Attorneys, we do all of the same things that a title company does, but with the benefits of being a law office. We can help with residential real estate, short sales, commercial real estate, refinances, 1031 exchanges, and FRIPTA withholding. Contact JK Closing Attorneys today at 954-332-3111. Again, that is 954-332-3111. One, one. You have been watching Making Money with Laura. For more information, contact Laura Sanders at 954-650-0827 or visit her website at thelaurasell.com. And now back to the show. Welcome to Making Money with Laura Sanders. I'm trying to help you guys to not get married and lose your money. And you men aren't signing prenups. What's going on here? No, I, don't, I, I didn't get into a marriage to do... I don't even separate accounts. My account, my money's your money, your money's my money. Yeah, and if it don't my work out... My money's my money, your money's my money. That's okay. Hey, whatever, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But, you know, I'm not going to look over my shoulder and worry about money and things of that nature. I like to build it. I like somebody that helps me build an empire... And I only believe in shoulder to shoulder on that. And I don't believe my money belongs or I do anything greater than anybody else. And maybe that's why 
She was around for 17 years because I never treated her differently, never looked down on her, nothing. And I, to this day, I don't, I don't do that. And so how much of your money did she get? It's not my money, our money. She, she did very well. Oh, That's okay. okay. Right? Listen. And she asked me, she said, how much of this do you want? I said, you keep it. I'll start again. I'm just being honest. It is what it is. Okay. You know, okay. I, I don't hold, I don't look back and I don't, I don't hold things against people. And I know it's a business. It's funny because the kids in here, when I tell them it's a business, you get married, make sure you know what you want. But the key is you got to know what you want. Well, your first time, you really didn't have a lot of money, I'm going to guess. Oh, you mic up. Um, the first time, I had no money. I had no money. And, and I went to work for my dad. I just graduated at NYU, and I was going to go to law school. The second time, I had money. Um, and then ever since then, and I made a lot of money with Michelle. We, you know, there was a time she came home, and there was millions, and she saw it, and she asked, what is this? And I said, that's what you're worth. And it is what it is. It's always been... You know, God's always been on my side. Makes me think of the mafia. No, not at all. <laughs> no, God's always been on my side. And, and you know, I, I just know that God will provide, and I put the work in, and it works. I, it's bad enough the way life is right now. You know, oh, it's women, very bad right now. If you find somebody who can build an empire with you, hold on to that person and hug them. Of course. Because that is the hardest thing to find, somebody who yeah. believes in what you believe. And to me, it's, it's only money. Well, and John, you're still married the second time and the first time you were young, so. Very true. And, yeah, I, I okay. didn't feel that um, a prenup was necessary, but I, I totally understand all the nuances and the coverage of it. Um, and I, I totally agree with uh, Freddie in the sense that, you know, marriage is a contract. It's, it's a partnership. You know, it's like a business because... If you subtract, you know, the, the finances from it and you just look at the importance of family and values and traditions and, and being there and being reliable to your partner, your partner's family, because let's be honest, you are marrying into the family. I think it's, it's just the most important thing. And yes, it's challenging. And I, I see that it's becoming even more challenging today um, with you know um, all these moving pieces in society everything's sped up um, there's a lot of um, different mindsets going on there's a lot of confusion and I think we have to get back to our core values um, uh, find out what's most important to you family John, John, we, we, we got her guests we got only 10 minutes we got your guests on okay. the line. Oh. oh welcome Scott we were just talking about, you know, um, Freddie had been divorced twice. John had been divorced. I have been divorced. So I was saying I found yeah, it interesting that... What? I have had a prior uh, uh, trip yeah. at it. And, but uh, I said I found I it interesting to. that neither one of them, when they got married a second time, didn't have prenuptial agreements. I found that interesting. All right, so prenuptial agreements are very important. I would put them, depending on the person's financial position, I would put them as important as an estate plan, and, and depending on when they are married, particularly if it is a marriage of people, uh, I don't want to give away anybody's age, but perhaps in my age group where you've acquired some things, and maybe it is a second marriage, and it is very important. Um, and uh, they are being with uh, being upheld uh, much more than they were, you know, 30 or 40 years ago. And uh, there is a way to do them, and uh, and it's certainly an appropriate uh, legal document that somebody should have if well, Freddie, they, you know, fit. In. Freddie was also asking about commercial real estate. He, w what were you asking? Is commercial real estate? treated the same as residential so here's a bit i'll give it a, you know i don't want to you know it's taken me a few years to learn what i'm doing but so basically when you get married as a general rule any assets that are going to be inquired after that date of marriage are going to be presumptively marital. now there are some exceptions but assume that you the starting point is you get married today you get married to a person today 
That means everything that you acquire starting tomorrow is going to have, presumptively, a marital character. And the fastest, best way to deal with that is, is to, one, define what is marital and not marital, which you can do in a, in a, in a, pre, in a prenuptial agreement, premarital agreement. Um, it's particularly important on those second marriages, you know, because, you know, you get married in your earlier 20s. What do you have? What you probably have is student loans. Who gives a damn, you know? But once you've acquired some assets and you've worked hard, you do want to protect them. And we can do that in the, the, the scope of a prenuptial agreement. Okay. What? So <laughs> we actually are running out of time. We only have three minutes. So tell me what's the most important thing if somebody was getting married tomorrow besides a prenuptial agreement, what would be the most important thing to save somebody some money before getting married that you would tell someone to do? Or if they were in okay. the middle of a divorce, what you would suggest besides hiring you? All right. All right. Well, aside from hiring me, which you can't go wrong by doing that. But I think the most important thing is one, you're in a divorce, be transparent in the sense of disclose your assets, comply with the rules of disclosure. Mandatory disclosure in the state of Florida is governed by Rule 12.285. Follow it. Don't play games. Don't think you're going to outthink the system. For those that are getting into those second marriages, you know, in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and so forth, or you have already have adult children and you're marrying, a prenuptial agreement is inappropriate. It is part of an estate. Think of it as a part of like an estate plan. It is appropriate. It is not being a underhanded or inappropriate. Secondly, in conjunction with that prenuptial agreement, you need to have a robust and transparent financial disclosure. Okay. And again, those are things we can discuss so that no one is entering into that prenuptial agreement and waiving potential rights that they may have without a full knowledge of what, in fact, it is that they are giving up. So those are the things that I would say. So basically, be above board in a divorce. And if you do a prenuptial agreement, and, and we kind of define what is appropriate for when you should have a prenuptial agreement, be above board in your disclosure. And life, well, it'll, it'll be just fine if you do those things. And how much did you lose in your first divorce? Not nearly as much as I would lose in the second. And ask me <laughs> if I had a prenuptial agreement. Did you have a prenuptial agreement? You're kidding me. I'm a lawyer. Of course we wouldn't have a prenuptial agreement. In the first but one? But don't make the same mistake. Of and, and or in the second one. And she signed it? No, she didn't. She told me, I'm not signing that. And I still married her. <laughs> Amy. That's because I didn't have me as a lawyer. <laughs> Amy, anyway. <laughs> 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 I know she's right there. I'm not stupid. Yeah. I said go Amy. Anyway, what's the best way that people can reach out to you if they're looking for a divorce attorney? Call me 954-587-2244. Or my email is slevine, L-E-V-I-N-E, -E, at Scott Levine, P-A, that's papaalpha.com. And again, don't be a stranger. Call um, I'm pretty friendly with my advice, and uh, there is such a concept as called divorce planning, but that would be another night and another. I agree. Uh, talk you should always be. Planning. Divorce planning is a interesting. Uh, I agree. Discussion. You can plan for one, believe it or not. That doesn't make you a bad person. That makes you a smart person. Well, thank you much for joining us tonight and for all y'all out there looking for the best realtor give laura sanders with remax direct a call at 954-650-0827 again that's 954-650-0827 you can go to my website at laura sell s-e-l-l dot com and i can't wait to let you hear what i have to say next week again thursday night at seven o'clock y'all have a good night Bye. Thank you for tuning in for Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. To join the conversation, call us at the studio, 888-994-4995-STUDIO-A, or contact Laura directly at 954-650-0827. Laura Sanders, a name you can trust.